Okay, welcome back. What I want to show you today is a follow-up to the last video where we did use uh, replicating portfolio to price a call option um, on a binomial tree with two branches and a single period. Uh, today we are going to do uh, almost the same thing. Uh, the only difference is going to be that we are going to use a different method, which is risk neutral pricing. Okay, so as you can tell here, I have already set up my tree. It is the same as last lecture, so that right now the spot price of my security, my stock, is at $60, and the price can either go up to $120 or the price can go down to $40. Okay, so that's really a feature binomial tree pricing. I only have two choices either I can go up or I can go down. And what I'm going to do, well, I'm interested in a strike. A call option with a strike of $60, a maturity one year. And I know that interest rates such that if I borrow $1 today, I'm going to have to repay in a year $1.20. Okay, so these are the parameters of the problem. Now, what I want to do is to uh, use risk neutral pricing to actually uh, find the price of my call option. Okay, so we're going to going to get started here and basically I'm going to remind you of the method that we use in class and we have seen that the price of a call is equal to the present value the present value of its expected payoff at maturity okay so that's just a fancy way of saying C0, the price of the call, is the present value, so it's I'm going to discount at the risk free rate. Future cash flows, where I'm going to take the expectation, so I know that with some probability, let's call it pi, we are going to end up in the up state, and I'm going to receive the payoff of the call. And with some probability, 1 minus pi, right? I only have 2 branches so it's either i go up or i go down so some probability one minus pi i'm going to get the payoff in the down state so you see that what do we know here well we already know a few things i know this that's equal to 1.2 the things that i do not know is this probability right when i form an expectations i need to know the probabilities of each state so here I actually don't know the probability of going up or the probability of going down. And I need also to figure out the payoffs. Okay, so let's start with the payoff. The payoff we did already last time. So what is the payoff of a call option that has strike 60 when the price is 120? Well, I have the right to buy something at $60, that's worth $120. So basically, that's a good deal for me, and I get a $60 discount. In other words, that's really $60 payoff. Now, in the down state, I have the right to buy something at $60, but that thing is only worth $40, right? The stock is only worth $40. So I will actually not exercise the stock, the call, and the call is said to be out of the money and the payoff is equal to zero. Okay, so now I know this thing. I know this thing. It's 60, it's zero. I need to figure out what is pi. Or pi actually uh, uh, can be inferred from stock prices. Okay, so pi is inferred from the price of the stock. Okay, why? Well, remember that the price of a stock today is uh, representative of the price of the stock tomorrow. And so if I know the price of the stock today and where the price of the stock tomorrow is, I have some actual information about uh, the probabilities, which are called uh, risk neutral probabilities of going up or going down. Okay. If you want to build some intuition about this, just think of what would happen to the stock price today if with 100% probability, so for sure, the price tomorrow would be 120. 
this seems like almost too good of a deal, right? It's unlikely that the price today would be 60 if the price tomorrow is 120. So knowing the relation between the price tomorrow and the price today tells us something about the probabilities of each uh, uh, branch. And so what I showed you in class is that we actually have sort of like a simple formula for pi, which is equal to uh, basically it's equal to the interest rate over the time period, so between today and the next uh, day, minus the gross return in the down state. That's also known as D, but here I really fully spell it out. It's SD minus S naught divided by the difference in gross returns. Okay, so SU, what's the price in the upstate minus S naught minus SD over S naught. Okay, so now let's go back to our problem and, and plug those numbers and solve for the price of the coal. Okay, so here I actually can solve directly for the probability of going up. It's equal to what? Exponential R cap T, we know it's 1.2. Minus SD over S naught. SD is equal to 40, S naught is equal to 60. So that's minus 40 over 60. Divided by S up over S naught. Let's go back CR3. Okay, so S up is equal to 120. So that should help us. So that's 120 here over S uh, S naught minus 40 S down over 60. Okay, so you can simplify this and actually uh, find a fairly uh, simple answer, which is uh, 0.4 or 40%. Okay, it's important that this number is between 0 and 1. It is, after all, uh, probability. That means that that's the probability of going up here. And we also need to know the probability of going down. Well, that's simply the probability of not going up. So that's 1 minus pi going to be equal to 0 0.6. So now we have this, we actually can now estimate this uh, uh, full equation. And so C naught is equal to 1 over the interest rate, 1 over 1.2 times pi, so 0 0.4 times the payoff in the upstate, which is 60 plus, we're running out of space here. Let's move this a little bit. Plus 0 0.6, right? The probability of going down times the payoff when we go down. What's the payoff when we go down? Well, it is zero here. Okay, so times zero. Okay, and that's equal to, well, this thing doesn't matter, so it's equal to 0 0.4 divided by 1.2 times 60. And that's exactly equal to $20. Okay, you can go back to the last video and check that this is indeed the price we have found. So those two methods are uh, rigorously identical and should give you the exact same results. I just happen to find um, this method a little bit easier uh, and faster to deal with uh, once you actually have a good hang of uh, estimating the formula. This should be no problem. Okay, um, once again, thank you for uh, watching and let me know if you have questions about the video and what you'd like to see. Thank you.